For those who have just joined us, here's our project. We're making a rendered letterbox suitable for any home whatsoever. Now we've laid our slab, we've laid our brickwork, we've mortared the brickwork, laid our courses and the header course. Now, we're ready to render. Right, before we render, because we just can't jump straight into it, we need to prep the area. Okay, so what we do first is grab a bolster or a scraper and we need to get rid of any of these little extra bits of cement which have accrued. We call them snot, technical term. And you just scrape those off. The reason we're doing this is we need to get the surface as flat and as level as possible. Makes it much more easy to render. Right, once you're happy, grab yourself an old brush and just dust it off. Once your area is clean, now you've got a masking tape up the areas you don't want to render, which is your letterbox and your slab. But before you do so, you need to clean these areas down or else your masking tape will not stick to it. So again, grab your bolster or your scraper. Just get these little bits of cement off. Again, dust that off. And the same with the slab. Once that dust it off, masking tape. Now try and get yourself long life, high quality masking tape. Not just your usual household quality masking tape because this stuff is UV resistant which means this has been sitting in a hot sun for a long time, it won't stick to it. I could leave this on for two weeks and it'll be fine. Also it's waterproof and it's very durable so you won't scrape through it. Masking tape up these areas. Right, now that we've prepped the area and we've put on the masking tape, we're ready for the beading. And this, my friends, is your beading. Now the purpose of the beading is twofold, very important indeed. As you can see, it gives you a nice straight edge. Also in rendering, it gives you something to work up to. Now, when you're measuring your, be your beading, here's something you've got to think about. You need a two mil gap at your base here because your slab can swell, okay? And if it does swell, it can pop your beading off, wreck all your handiwork. Now, the most important thing with beading, when you're putting it on, we don't want it to overlap. If I just cut that there, see how there's plenty of plastic there? That means the render won't stick on properly. We're gonna see a lot of plastic. Not a very good job. So what we really need to do is miter it. Now, it doesn't need to be as pretty as miter in a timber work, but miter all the same. Now to cut it, just get any old tin snips. Twist it, and it's off. So now, we're ready to glue. Throw on your liquid nails like so. Put on nice and thick. Just want that to spread out over a good sized surface area. Righto. Line him up nice and level. Squeeze him on, and take it off. Leave that for about 10 minutes. Keep on gluing. One little tip though, to spread your glue out evenly, just give a little wiggle up the brickwork like that. Spreads it out nice and evenly. And again, take it off and leave for 10 minutes. Well, I had my coffee and these are about ready to go on. That should stick almost immediately. Press it down nice and firmly and evenly. Once you've stuck them on and you're happy, grab your scraper or in my case the bolster. And again, we want to scrape off little bits of snot. Which we like to call them. Off your beads. Now, an ideal situa situation is, as you can see, there's plenty of space in between the triangles here. That means your render's got something to stick to. It can't stick to plastic. So if you've got plenty of glue in your hole here, then your render won't stick in very well. So just scrape off any excess. Lovely. Now all your bits are stuck down, you're happy? It's render time. Right, now it's time to render. Now again, ratios of water to render or mortar, 
as you can see on the back of your bag. First things first, always take your render to your water. I've got four and a half liters of water to a bag of render. Pop that in your mi mixing bucket. Now, if you're not confident with your rendering, um, you might wanna just do up half a bag, otherwise it'll go off before you're ready. Um, because if you do do up a bag and you are quite confident, if you need the water, you can just add it to it. All right. Easiest way to open, put your hand in the valve and just rip it up. Once that's done, grab your spiral mixer. This is what we're gonna use to mix the render in the water. You can pick these up from any hardware store between 10 and 30 bucks, they're quite cheap. Pop that in your bucket, because then what we're gonna do is grab your easy render, just put it comfortably on your knee, and we wanna just ease some out and mix at the same time. Just nice and slow, you don't want your powder to go everywhere. This may seem a little bit like rubbing your belly and tapping your head at the same time, but it's really not that hard. It's a little messy. There we go. This should take about two to three minutes to mix completely. By the end, we want a nice, smooth consistency, quite moist. All right. Couple little spins, little tap, and we're done. That's the kind of consistency we want. All right, now ready to render. Right, now we're ready to render. Now just like brickwork, there's a bit of a technique to rendering. So you can do it one of two ways, dependent on your ability. First one, you can put on one thick coat, or if you're not as good at it, put it in two skim coats, which is what I'm gonna do. Now, my friend Derek, he's an absolute Jedi with the trowel on the hawk board, so he's gonna show us how to put on one thick coat. Derek. There are a lot of techniques and tips involved with, uh, with solid plastering. Just to give you a couple of the basics, uh, the most important thing is being able to get the render off the hawk and onto the trowel. Hawk board trowel. Hawk board trowel, okay. The, the technique is like clutch control in a car. Mm -hmm. So you can't move one without the other, otherwise the render will end up on the floor. Right. So the technique is, is simply putting the trowel on the hawk and moving them both together to get a big wad of render in the middle of your trowel. Okay. This is something worth practicing and I would recommend that anybody that's going to Render a wall should practice this for a good half an hour before they start. Yep. Just getting the technique right. So why do we need to do that? Okay, the idea is, I'm gonna take a little bit of render off the hawk. The idea is that as a novice, what you wanna aim for is render on your trowel with about 20 millimeters each side left without render. So by doing this technique, we're creating a sausage effect, getting longer and longer as we do it. Now, currently that's too long, and if we were to push that render onto the wall, all the render would spew off the end of the trowels and onto the floor. Okay, so what we then do is turn the angle of our hand around the other way and create a dob on the hawk, and then we we'll do that technique again until we end up with approximately 20 mil Either, either side. side of the trowel. So when you apply that even pressure, it'll come right to the edges? It'll come off to the edges of the trowel. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, I'll uh, have a go at putting this on the wall, see if I am actually a Jedi with the trowel. <laughs> uh, what we do is damp the brickwork down first. Um, what that does is it hydrates the wall, gets water into it. So when you apply your render, the render doesn't dry too quickly. And if you've got a bit more time to work with the render, you'll be able to do a better job with the finished article. Because the hot brickwork wants to suck the water out of your, your render. That's correct, right. yeah. And what we do is let the free water go from the wall. When I say free water, if you can physically get water on the back of your hand or on your hand somewhere, then you should just leave it for a minute or so. Yep. Once the water's gone and the shine's gone off the wall, then it's ready to render. Right, okay. Uh, now you can do that process on a small area with a water with a brush, just any old household brush or broom. 
Uh, if you've got a bigger area, you could use a, a hose and give it a light spray with a hose. Yep, okay. So I can see from here, Derek, you're starting off almost parallel to the slab and then you're slowly giving it angle. That's, ex that's right. To the top so you can get that even pressure down, is that correct? That's exactly right, yeah. So just to try and show what, exactly what you said there, Chris, which was start with your trowel slightly accentuated, but that way, uh -huh. and then gently ease the render off the trowel by changing the angle of the trowel as you're going up the wall. Are you using the, um, the bead to, to keep it level? The, the corner bead is, is exactly for that. I push my trowel, put a nice bit of pressure on the bead, and that guarantees that it's nice and flat, at least here and here and the rest will be where my eye comes on to make sure I've got it just right. right. Right, like I said, there are two different ways to render. The first one being the application of the thick coat, and the second, the two quick skim coats, which is what I'm going to do. Now, the reason why the thick coat is so hard to do, and it's why we've got Derek to show you, is that once you've got the beading, which is 3 mil from the brickwork, and you add the glue, you're looking at anywhere between 3 to 7 mil of render. You've got to apply evenly, over the brickwork. Now, with that experience, that can be quite difficult. A little bit difficult for me. So, I'm going to show you how a novice would do it, which is the skim coat. Get up off wood and now scoop. Now, we only need a just a thin bit of render. All I really need to worry about in the two thin coats is to apply two mil onto my brickwork and only go up to about really here. Otherwise, we've got nothing to add the render on on our second coat. So as long as it's nice and straight, and it's a relatively even grain, then we're fine. By the way, don't be too critical on having 20 mil either side of your trowel. As long as you've got half your trowel full, that's fine. With practice, the technique will come. By the way, if you're finding the render's a little bit hard to work, just add a little bit of water as you go. You basically want the consistency to be like chocolate mousse. Sweet, happy with that. Right, so that's my first coat. You basically want it to look, well, when it's dry, if you leave it overnight for four hours, if you can't wait, it should look nice and white. But what I'm saying is, you want it nice and level, as far as your eye can tell. And you haven't covered this completely, which means your render's got something to stick to when you apply your second coat. Once you've applied your second coat, you float it and finish it off. We're on the home straight. So one of the hardest things about rendering, besides the technique itself, is wondering how much render you've actually put on. Sometimes you want to put on way too much than you actually need it. Before you put on your second coat, the best way to gauge if you put on too much, just get a level or a nice straight edge, put it on the edges and just run it down. You should have a nice gap in between your straight edge and your first coat. If you do, you've got a two or three mil, then beautiful, you've got enough render to chuck on another coat. If you've chucked on too much, just scrape it off. All right, ready for the second coat. Right, once your second coat is nice and dry, we're ready to screed. Now, screeding basically takes off any excess render and you want to shave it off. So just apply your screed to both beads. See, you've got, we've got plenty of render there. You want to take it all off in one go, so it's just a a shaving motion like that. Even after screening, you might have a few uneven surfaces. It might look level, but to give it a nice smooth finish, we float. Now, what we want to do is add some nice even pressure. Work from left to right, top to bottom. If you find your render's getting a little bit hard to work, you just need to add a little bit of moisture. To do so, just get a brush, just flick a little bit of water on it. We want to blend all these uneven surfaces through. 
All right, once that's done, we just need to sponge it. Just get a, get a sponge, only slightly damp. And what we want to do is, just some light pressure, just rub over where you floated. See that's really bringing out the grain. Gives it a nice smooth finish, so we're ready to paint. But we're going to have to leave that about two to three days before it's ready to paint. And also that render is going to take a lot of moisture out. Uh, once it starts to go a little bit white and patchy, you need to add moisture. You'll need to do so for probably about morning and night for the next two to three days. You can use a hose, damp cloth, or just a little bit of, a little bit of water on a brush like so. Once that's done, and it's all dry, we're ready to paint.